you peoples. For the Lord the Most High is awesome. God is king over the nations. He is exalted. Join me in prayer. Eternal God, by raising Jesus from the dead, you proclaimed his victory, and by his ascension, you declared him Lord of all. Lift up our hearts to heaven, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will rise and sing our first hymn in this book, this is 267. And in this book, since we still got folks at home, this book, it's 150. Come, Christians, join to sing. Eternal God, we know your love for us is from everlasting to everlasting, steadfast and sure. Our hearts often lack strength, our minds wander, and we succumb to the temptations around us that move us away from you. Bring us back to you and show us wisdom that we might move ever closer to the ideal shown to us by Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.
we fail, we are loved and forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Civil War. 
and it was to remember the soldiers who died in the Civil War. And so we have uh, we have a holiday that is not you know it's not designed to be a happy day. It's designed to be a somber day. And Memorial Day is a day of remembrance, like a memorial service, like a funeral. And it's a day to remember those who died in service. And we have Veterans Day for those who didn't. And I think it's important that we remember that the freedoms we have, the ability to say what we want to say, the ability to go to church where we want to go to church, the ability to choose what we do for a living, how long we go to school after we get out of high school. All those things were paid for by people like the ones on this boat. Join me in prayer. Lord, we thank you for those who've served. Lord, we thank you for those who served. We thank you for those who are lost. We thank you for those who are lost. Be with those who lost them. Be with those who lost them. Keep us mindful of their sacrifice. Keep us, Keep us mindful of their sacrifice. And thankful for what they and you have done for us. And thankful for what they and you have done for us. Amen. 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 Today is Psalm 93. You can find it on page 512 in your pew Bibles. And we're going to read the entire psalm in unison because it is so very long. Um, it's one of our shorter psalms. It's only five verses. Give folks a second to find the page. 512, Psalm 93. There are two psalm readings for today, and I took the call to worship from one, and we're doing the other one again. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O oh Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. More majestic than the thunders of mighty waters. More majestic than the waves of the sea. Majestic on highs is the Lord. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness befits your eyes, O oh Lord, forever. Our second reading is from the Epistle to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know Him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which He has called you, what are the riches of His glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of His power for us who believe. According to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ 
when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Our gospel reading today is the last few verses of the gospel of Luke. Jesus is speaking here. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany. And lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. Our last reading today is the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, here he's referring to Luke. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you've heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it's not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by His own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When He said this, as they were watching, He was lifted up, and a cloud took Him out of their sight. While He was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come again in the same way as you saw him go to heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so, ascension is held to be 40 days from Easter, which was his last Thursday. And we know that in the Bible, 40 actually means, and it's used to mean throughout, a bunch. Or a while. You see 40 days and 40 nights. They wandered in the, the, the Jews wandered in the wilderness 40 years. Uh, it means a long time. And Ascension is a significant enough event that we celebrate it on a Sunday. And when we get into and do our creeds, when we look at the Apostles' Creed, when we look at the Nicene Creed, and we see the line 
He ascended into heaven. This is very central and important to our theology as Christians. Because it shows there's, there's two big pieces of theology here. We have Easter, the death and rising, that is the atonement for sin that we could not give because the atonement needed to be given by one who had not sinned. And that leaves us out. Um, the other piece though, this bringing up into heaven. When Jesus ascends, in front of these witnesses, the same full group of witnesses who followed him, those who've been with him, those who've seen him do the healing, those who've seen the miracle of the fishes and the loaves. When these people saw him rise, they understood that this was an affirmation of Jesus' place, of where Jesus is and Jesus' power, and the glory to be given to Jesus. This was a visible, tangible, they watched him go. You're standing there, put yourself in their place for a second. You're standing there. You've walked around with this guy. You've followed this guy around. You've gone through hardships. You've watched him do miracles. You've been afraid of the Jews. You watched him whip him, hang him on a cross, stick him in a cave. Now he's come back. And he's walked with you and he's talked with you. And he blesses you. And he gives you the Great Commission, as they call it when you read Matthew and Mark. The Great Commission to go out and make disciples of the nations. And then, just in case you weren't sure, just in case dying and coming back and turning water into wine and feeding 4,000 men and all the women and children from, you know, a couple of fish and some little bread rolls. Um, wasn't sufficient. You watch him float up away into heaven. That ascension, that moving up, is that peace that assures us that Jesus does have the authority to do what he did, that he does have the authority to carry out what he has for us that we are right in worshiping Him and right in saying that He is on the right hand of God the Father and that He will come again. This is a very important piece for us to understanding that these things are going to happen. We don't get to know when, right? Jesus is very explicit, right? Jesus is very explicit when they ask him about when this is going to happen. He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. It's not for you to know. And that's said several other places. He talks about you know, if the owner of the house knew when the thief was coming in the night, he would be awake and not get robbed. Right? That's another story from the Gospels. And Jesus is telling a story. And so, we don't get to know. But we have these assurances. We have the miracles. We have the ascension. We have the death and resurrection. We have these assurances that Jesus does offer the strength the peace that has been offered and we have 
the assurances. That God has gone through all of this trouble because God loves us. Because God's love is from everlasting to everlasting. Because He made us. He gave us so many gifts. We have free will. That is possibly the greatest gift He's given us, aside from grace. We have free will. We have strength. We have fellowship. We have love. And all these things are gifts to us from God. And we have all these signs to let us know that we are loved by the God who has this power. For this, we should be thankful. And by this, we are blessed. Amen. 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 Well, rise and sing with me number 263 in this book or 142 in the other book. All hail the power of Jesus' name. And rest assured that the ascension tells you and shows you that this power is there. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May we see it. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son to us, for his presence among us, for his sacrifice and rising, for his ascension that offers us yet another proof of the truth of his word. We thank you for the sacrifice of so many people that has allowed us to be here today, worshiping you the way we believe you wish us to. We thank you for the health and welfare that we enjoy. We know that not everyone can be happy this day. We know that not everyone has fellowship. Not everyone has health. There are many with loss of loved ones, loss of people around them, loss of companionship, fellowship, with illness, hurt, lack of faith. We ask that you take care of these people in your way. We ask you to bring them strength, bring them wholeness, bring them healing, bring them to wisdom to understand that sometimes inexplicable things happen, even when we wish they wouldn't. Watch over us as we are here together. Watch over those of our fellowship who are not here with us today. Bring them back safe and whole to us. Guide us to be your people. To move forward as a church in this new age and in this new time. We know that just as Paul said, you still rule in this age, which was Paul's age to come. Keep us faithful and strong and dedicated and prayerful. We ask these things of you in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'll invite you to two pieces of discipleship this week. The first is tomorrow. Take a moment and remember the sacrifices made by others that have made our worship here and our life in this country and our way of life possible. It is a solemn occasion. But it can also be a celebration, a celebration of the result of their sacrifice. And also celebrate the result of the sacrifice of another one who died for you. Jesus, who is the Christ. 
remember his ascension, remember the many proofs he showed, use them to strengthen your belief. There is a time in our service when we return some of the gifts that we've been given to God back to God. Now is that time.
who have given that you might receive. Go out knowing the peace of God which passes all understanding goes with you. We go out sure of God's peace and provision. Go forth loving the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and loving your neighbor as yourself. We go forth with love in our hearts. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope and in love. Amen. Amen.